Harun al-Rashid, born in 766 and died in 809. The Abbasid Empire was one of the foremost political dynasties to have ruled the Muslim world. The Umayyad era came to an abrupt end following the Abbasid revolution of 750, when Marwan II, the last Umayyad ruler, was resoundingly defeated by the supporters of Abu Abbas Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Abdullah ibn Abbas, otherwise known as Abu Abbas al-Safa, after which the Abbasid went on to rule the Muslim world until the Mongol invasion from Asia in the 13th century. Though al-Safa was generally considered to be the founder of the Abbasid Empire, it was his brother Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Abdullah ibn Abbas, or better known as Abu Jafar al-Mansur, who played a pivotal role in consolidating Abbasid rule across the Muslim world. Al-Mansur was a shrewd and gifted ruler who was equally famous for his personal piety and unusual political and diplomatic skills. After the death of al-Safa, he not only swiftly established his authority as a caliph of the Muslim world, but also founded the city of Baghdad in 762 and ensured that a smooth political transition would take place after his reign. Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn al-Mansur, better known as al-Mahdi, succeeded his father, al-Mansur, and ruled for a decade. He had seven sons, including Musa and Harun. After al-Mahdi's death, his son Musa ascended the Abbasid throne, but his rule only lasted a year. He was succeeded by Prince Harun al-Rashid, who went on to become one of the Muslim world's most famous and influential leaders. Born in the central Iranian city of Rai, Harun was the favourite son of his parents. At the time of his birth, his father al-Mahdi was a governor of the eastern region of the Abbasid Empire, and his beautiful Yemeni mother, Khayzuran bin Atta, was his father's favourite wife. Like his mother, Harun was an attractive child who grew up under the watchful gaze of his parents within the governor's palatial residence, surrounded by much wealth and much luxury. Educated in Arabic and aspects of Islamic sciences during his early years, Harun soon became well known for his bravery, his intelligence and his loyalty to the Abbasid clan. Like his grandfather al-Mansur, his father al-Mahdi was very fond of people from Mecca and Medina. When he visited the sacred cities in 777, he showered the locals with money and gifts and took a keen interest in carrying out restoration work on the sacred mosque, the Haram al-Sharif, in Mecca. As a youngster, Harun accompanied his father to Mecca and Medina during the Hajj season and instantly fell in love with the people of the two sacred cities. Al-Mahdi's generosity won over the people of Arabia, and this helped to consolidate his caliphal authority across the Muslim world. Also at this time, Al-Mahdi took the opportunity to introduce young Harun to the people of Mecca and Medina as his potential successor. On their return to Baghdad, Al-Mahdi entrusted Harun's educational needs to Yahya ibn Khalid ibn Barmaki, his talented Persian political advisor and administrator. Yahya groomed him with care, teaching him aspects of political strategy and civil administration, and preparing him for political leadership in the near future. Yahya has influenced Harun's education and political thinking so profoundly that the latter soon came to rely on him for both psychological and emotional support. As expected, Harun grew up to be a very able and competent young person. Indeed, he was barely 15 when his knowledge of military strategy and tactics was put to a severe test. Appointed commander of the Abbasid army in 780, his orders were to go and neutralise the Byzantine forces which had come a persistent thorn in the side of the Abbasid army by nominating Harun to lead the Abbasid forces against the Byzantines. Al-Mahdi effectively nominated his favourite son to succeed him as the Abbasid Khalif. Harun's military campaign against the Byzantine proved very successful and he acquired first-hand experience of leading an army on the battlefield. During this time with the army, he established a good rapport with the generals who became very fond of the young prince. 
Two years later, Harun was commissioned to lead another large-scale military campaign against the Byzantines, and again he returned home triumphant, having besieged the Greeks inside Constantinople before Empress Irene came out and pleaded for peace. This was a remarkable achievement for the 16-year-old Harun, whose efforts earned him the title of Al-Rashid, meaning the rightly guided one. Due to overindulgence, the Muslim rulers of the time often tended to die unexpectedly whilst still in their prime, and this prompted Al-Mahdi to officially nominate his successor in order to avoid a bitter political struggle after his death. Having groomed his sons Musa and Harun for political leadership, he ensured everyone pledged their allegiance to Musa as his heir apparent, while young Harun was confirmed as Musa's successor. When Al-Mahdi died in 785, Harun was a governor of the western region of the Abbasid Empire, which extended all the way from Tunisia at one end to Anbar on the outskirts of Baghdad at the other. Likewise, Yahya ibn Khalid, his mentor and guide, was put in charge of the political and civil administration of this vast province, with Harun as the governor being mainly a figurehead. Musa, who took the title of Al-Hadi, succeeded his father as Khalif, but his reign did not last long. Like his father, he died in mysterious circumstances barely a year after ascending the Abbasid throne. Historians have provided conflicting accounts about the circumstances which led to Al-Mahdi and Al-Hadi's death. When rumours, speculations and gossip began to spread throughout Baghdad like wildfire, especially after the death of Al-Hadi, Khayzuran, the mother of Harun, stepped to the fore and took matters into her own hands. She summoned her favourite son, who was next in line to ascend the Abbasid throne, and installed him as a new Khalif. Harun al-Rashid was only 21 at the time, and the young Khalif appointed the aged Yahya ibn Khalid as his personal advisor and guide to the highest rankings government post in the land. With Yahya to guide him through the massive task of administering both the internal and external affairs of the vast Abbasid Empire, Harun soon established himself as an undisputed ruler of the Muslim world. As a loyal, committed and extremely experienced bureaucrat, Yahya enjoined Harun's full support and confidence, so much so that the young Khalif used to fondly refer to him as his father. But it was Yahya's younger son, Jafar, who forged a close friendship with the young Khalif. Like Harun, he was in his early 20s and was well known for his love of glamour, fun and adventure. They had so much in common that Jafar subsequently became famous as Harun's loyal companion in the world-famous adventurous tales, The Thousand and One Nights. Alpha Layla wa Layla, also known as the Arabian Nights. As prominent members of Harun's inner circle, Yahya and his son Fadl and Jafar welded considerable power within the Abbasid political hierarchy. The Barmakids, as Jafar's families were called, also had open access to the Khalif, thanks to their continued political support and loyalty to him as advisor and guides. If Harun became famous as a glamorous and fun-loving Khalif, then he was equally well known for his personal piety and benevolence. As a devout Muslim, he became the first and only Khalif to have performed the Hajj no fewer than eight times together with his beloved wife, Zubaydah. Following the footsteps of his father al-Mahdi and grandfather al-Mansur, Every time Harun visited Mecca and Medina, he lavished the locals with gifts and clothing and money. Prior to each Hajj session, he took it on himself to personally prepare for the journey. He also encouraged his officials as well as the masses to accompany him, leaving the affairs of the states in the safe hands of his Burma kids' visors and other high-ranking government officials. During his reign as Khalif, he also radically reformed the civil and administrative systems of the state in order to increase efficiency and effectiveness across all levels of government. To put an end to all Byzantine incursions, he instigated military campaigns against them and, in doing so, became the first ruler in Muslim history to have led the Hajj delegation and also an army onto the battlefield in the same year. 
Harun's greatness lay in the fact that he not only preached but also led his people by his personal example. This naturally made him very popular with his officials as well as the masses. In fact, during his reign as Caliph, Harun sent military expeditions against the Byzantines every year. Determined to undermine their stratagem, he utilised his profound knowledge and understanding of military strategy and tactics against the Byzantines with remarkable success. He often left the political and civil affairs of his government in the hands of the Barmakids so that he could focus his full attention on the external foes of his empire. His reign thus represented the zenith of Abbasid glory and achievement. After establishing political stability, increasing economic prosperity, raising educational standards and promoting social peace and solidarity across the Muslim world, he founded the first fully operational hospital in Baghdad. He also established a library and research centre, which became known as the Bayt al-Hikmah, or the House of Wisdom where Muslim scientists, astronomers and philosophers pursued pioneering studies and research in all the sciences of the day. Moreover, he was instrumental in the development of an effective postal system across the Abbasid Empire. He constructed new roads and highways in order to facilitate trade and commerce, as well as long-distance travel and communication between different regions of his empire. Under Harun's wise and inspirational leadership, a thriving and tolerant society emerged in the Muslim world, where scholars, writers and thinkers were able to engage in debate and discussion on religious, philosophical, scientific and literary themes without any fear of political, religious or social sanctions. For this reason, his reign became known as the Golden Age of the Abbasid rule and echoes of this period naturally found their way into the stories of the famous 1001 Nights. Being the main hero of this epic tale, he is depicted roaming around Baghdad, the magnificent city of palaces populated with by wealthy civil servants and middle class merchants. Engaging in hilarious adventures, often in the middle of the night, accompanied by his colleague Jafar, the Barmakids and Abu Nuwas, the well-known poet, Although The Thousand One Nights is a fictional account of Khalif Harun al-Rashid's supposed exploits, it does bear a striking resemblance to the real Khalif because he never failed to appreciate and admire the lighter and humorous side of life. As an intelligent and cultured man, he enjoyed life to its full and did so without any way of making a mockery of his faith or his beliefs. Though Khalif Harun's transformed Baghdad into one of the world's most advanced and dazzling cities, He did not like his intense heat and hot climate. Throughout his reign, he went back and forth from one city to the next in search of his ideal location and environment. He preferred a cool and lively and refreshing breeze, which, of course, was conspicuous by his absence in Baghdad. After a long quest for his ideal location, he finally settled in the ancient Roman city of Kalinicum, which had been transformed by his grandfather and Mansur into a thriving metropolis. Later renamed as Al Rafika, it is today located in Syria. In 802, Harun went to perform yet another Hajj, and this time he took his sons, Muhammad, who later became known as Khalif al Amin, and Abdullah, who took the title of Khalif al Ma'moon, with him. They visited the city's Mecca Medina, where he distributed huge sums of money to the locals and also introduced his sons the future successors to the people of Mecca and Medina. The Khalif was only 36 at the time. On his return from the Hajj, he sensed something wasn't quite right at the courts and his response took everyone around him by complete surprise. He removed the Burma kids, namely the viziers, Yahya and his two sons Jafar and Fadl from the higher ranks of government posts and placed them under house arrest. Jafar was eventually murdered. Harun's drastic and heavy-handed approach to his supporters continues to baffle and bemuse historians to this day. As expected, without the support and guidance of his loyal and somewhat flamboyant Barmakid's viziers, he struggled to maintain peace and stability throughout the Abbasid Empire, and this prompted him to appoint Fadl ibn Rabi, the son of the distinguished vizier Rabi, who had served his grandfather al-Mansur, 
and his father, Al-Mahdi, very loyally to the post of chief minister, but he too struggled to maintain the peace and security of the Abbasid Empire. During the final years of his reign, Harun became preoccupied with military campaigns against the Byzantines and his political opponents at home. He died of illness at the age of 43 during a military expedition to Persia and was buried in the ancient city of Tus. Before his death, he stipulated that his sons Al-Amin should succeed him as Khalif and he, in turn, was to be succeeded by al Ma'mun. By this he hoped to avoid a protracted succession battle after his death but his plans did not work out as he had hoped. <laughs> all in all, with the death of Khalif Harun al-Rashid, a glorious chapter in Muslim history came to an abrupt end. As one of the Muslim world's most influential rulers, he is today famous for both in the East and the West for his wide ranging contributions to the rise and development of Islamic culture and civilization. <laughs>